Welcome to the Diopsis Nova VEP Vision Testing System training video. The video will introduce you to this important vision testing device and teach you proper preparation and general functionality of the Nova VEP test. If you have additional questions after watching this video, please contact your Diopsis Clinical Application Specialist. You can also review the operator's manual found on the device desktop or call Diopsis directly at the number on the screen. Before testing patients using the Diopsis Nova Vision Testing System, we will review some of the features of the device. First, you must plug the device into a dedicated, properly grounded power outlet. Next, you may adjust the height of the operator's tray to your height for comfortable viewing of the screen and ease of use of the keyboard and mouse. To turn the device on, press the black power button located just beneath the left side of the operator's tray. Once the device has successfully started and the operator's monitor is on, double-click on the Nova icon on the desktop. This will open the Nova Vision Testing Program. Begin by entering all patient information into the Diopsis Nova software for those patients who will be tested for the day. Later, as patients are brought to you for testing, you will be able to click on the patient's name and proceed directly to patient preparation and with running this test. This will help with patient flow. To save you time, it is helpful to have all testing supplies within arm's reach before bringing the patient into the testing room. Be sure to have the following items ready. Clean gauze, the tube of new prep gel, the tube of 1020 conductive paste, three disposable EEG electrodes, and the VEP lead wires. We advise attaching the electrodes to the three lead wires ahead of time for easier patient prep. Properly prepping the patient for the VEP test is one of three important steps in the testing procedure since proper electrode application is crucial in achieving quality test results. Once the patient is comfortably seated, apply a pearl size amount of new prep gel to a clean gauze pad. Rub the gel onto the skin on the center of the patient's forehead, just below the hairline, with moderate pressure using four to five small circular motions. Be sure to consider the size of the electrode when prepping the patient. The electrode should not come into contact with the hair on the forehead. Place another pearl size amount of new prep gel onto an additional clean gauze pad. Rub the gel onto the skin just above the temple area on the side of the forehead using four to five circular motions. Gently remove all remaining gel thoroughly with a dry part of the gauze. On another piece of gauze, apply a pearl size amount of the new prep gel. Keeping the patient's head straight, follow the spine up to the patient's inion, the small bump on the back of the patient's head. About a finger's width above the inion is where you will prep the patient and place the electrode. Once you have located the proper location on the back of the head, gently part the hair and rub the gel onto the scalp to thoroughly cleanse the area. Remove excess gel with a dry part of the gauze. Keep in mind that the back electrode is the most important site and therefore, attention to detail is imperative. The scalp is thicker at this location, so harder scrubbing is necessary to achieve good conductivity. Place a pearl-sized amount of 1020 conductive paste onto the cleansed area on the back of the head. You may choose to apply paste directly to the electrode sponge. The second most important step is electrode placement. Place the center of the electrode connected to the red lead wire directly over the conductive paste on the back of the patient's head, covering the conductive paste with enough pressure to ensure good adhesion. Next, place a pearl-sized amount of 1020 conductive paste onto both recently cleansed forehead areas. Place the center of the electrode connected to the green lead wire directly over the conductive paste on the area just above the temple, covering the conductive paste with enough pressure to ensure good adhesion. Place the center of the electrode connected to the black lead wire directly over the conductive paste on the center of the forehead, covering the conductive paste with enough pressure to ensure good adhesion. Plug each lead wire, the green, red, and black, 
into the corresponding color jack of the filter amplifier module. Adjust the lead wires so they rest gently over the patient's ear and out of their line of sight. Instruct the patient to remove Bluetooth devices or external hearing aids if necessary. The third important step is to make sure the patient is properly refracted for distance vision and is placed 39 inches from the patient-facing screen. The patient should not be wearing bifocals or progressive lenses, as this can cause inaccurate recordings. Proper testing distance is crucial for recording accurate information. Once the patient is prepped and positioned correctly, completely darken the room and begin the test. Double-click on the patient's name to get to the Select a Test screen. Under the Select Nova Test section, select the Nova LX option and click New Test. For more information on Nova TR testing, please refer to your operator's manual. Notice the sensor status indicator shown on the testing screen. This sensor status is a measure of the quality of the connection to the patient's head through the electrodes. The sensor has three status levels from best to worst, green, yellow, and red. If the sensor status is not green, testing is possible but strongly discouraged. Click on Run Test to begin. The first prompt will instruct you to patch the patient's left eye. The easiest way to do this is to have the patient use an occluder to cover the left eye. If the use of an occluder is not practical for a particular patient, then the patient's eye may be patched by the method normally used by the practice. Once the patient's left eye is covered, let the patient know there will be a red circle surrounded by black and white squares. Instruct them to look towards the red circle while keeping the squares in focus and to blink naturally. Both eyes should remain open. Select OK. This will initiate an 8-second warm-up test. Data is not collected during this time. After completing the 8-second test, the Low Contrast Test prompt will appear. Select OK to begin a 15-second Low Contrast Test. The Diopsis Nova software is able to detect excessive blinking and movement. As the test is running, these artifacts are detected and counted. In such instances where artifacts are detected, the corresponding data is collected but not signal averaged. This feature ensures that only the relevant and accurate data of the VEP signal is processed. If excessive artifacts are detected, a warning, Excessive Artifacts Detected, will be shown. It is recommended, but not required, that you rerun the section of the test that showed excessive artifacts. If you choose to rerun the test due to the excessive artifact warning, first check the electrode connections and then remind the patient to relax and blink as needed and to try to focus on the screen. Continue to follow the prompts on the screen after each section of the test is completed. Halfway through, the prompts will instruct you to test the other eye. Once all sections are successfully completed, you may choose to print the final report. To exit the report screen, simply click the X located within the upper right-hand corner of the window. Click on Save Results. You may now turn the lights on and gently remove the electrodes from the patient. You may need to use gauze and alcohol to remove any remaining conductive paste from the electrode locations. For more information on test preparation or running the test, contact your Diopsis Clinical Application Specialist. Review the Diopsis Nova Vision Testing System Operator's Manual or call Diopsis directly at 1-973-244-0622.